Welcome, dear students. This is me, Dr. Ahmed Farid, Associate Professor of Anatomy and Embryology, and in this video, we'll discuss the musculature of the front of the forearm. At the beginning, I want to tell you that the musculature of the front of the forearm are arranged into two layers, superficial layer and the deep layer, or superficial group and the deep group. In this video, we'll be concerned with the superficial group of the muscles of the front of the forearm. At the first, I want to show the muscles and enumerate them uh, and see the general features of these muscles. Uh, if I want to start by this structure, this is called the bicepital aponeurosis and it's one of the insertions of the biceps muscle. It's a band of deep fascia. So I will start by hiding this structure to see the muscles uh, completely. So now we can look to the muscles of the front of the forearm and especially the superficial group. They are taking a common origin from the front of the medial epicondyle of the humerus and if I want to enumerate them from lateral to medial, I will start by this short oblique muscle which is called the pronator teres. After pronator teres, we will find this muscle which is called the flexor carpi radialis flexor carpi radialis after then i will find this tiny muscle with long slender tendon which is called the palmaris longus and most immediately i will find the flexor carpi annaris muscle as you see these four muscles are present in the same anatomical plane which are a little superficial to the last muscle let's enumerate them again pronator teres flexor carpi radialis palmaris longus and the flexor carpi ulnaris. All these four muscles, as you see, if I uh, uh, selected them together, they are present in the same anatomical plane. And below them or just deep to them, I have the last muscle in the front of the forearm, which is the flexor digitorum superficialis, this one, as you see. So this is flexor digitorum superficialis. Okay, now we knew the names of the muscles and their arrangement and how they are arranged in two anatomical planes and uh, how they are taking origin from the common flexor origin which is the front of the medial epicondyle of the humerus and of course we are looking now to the uh, front of the right forearm as you see. In the following uh, few minutes, we will take each muscle and talk about its attachments and actions. As regards the nerve supply, all the superficial muscles of the front of the forearm are supplied by the median nerve, except uh, the muscle which is called flexor carpi annaris. It takes nerve supply from the ulnar nerve. Let's start by the first one, which is pronator teres. If I want to look to the attachments of this pronator teres, I will find it's taking origin by two heads. The first head is called humeral head, originating from the front of the medial epicondyle, which is the common flexor origin. The second head is called ulnar head because it originates from the coronoid process of ulna. And as regard its insertion, it's inserted into the uh, maximum convexity of the lateral surface of the radius as you see at a tuberosity called pronator tuberosity so this is the muscle with its origin and insertion as you see originates from front of the common flexor origin and coronoid process and goes to be inserted into the lateral surface or the middle of the lateral surface of the radius at the point of its maximum convexity at area called pronator tuberosity. Okay, if I want to uh, uh, make approximation between insertion and the origin, so it will take the radius like this, and this will be called the pronation. And now we will look to the pronation movement. As you see, this is the pronation movement formed by pronator teres which is coming from humerus and the ulna and going to be inserted into the radius like this. Okay. As regard the second muscle, which is just medial to pronator teres, it's called the flexor carpi radialis. 
flexor carpi radialis. Now we will talk about the attachments and the action of flexor carpi radialis. Flexor carpi radialis so simply originates from the common flexor origin which is the front of the medial epicondyle of the humerus and as regard the insertion it's going to be inserted into the front of the uh, second and the third metacarpal bones at their bases as you see so uh, uh, if this muscle will perform an action it will act on the wrist joint so it can make flexion of the hand at the wrist joint because it crosses anterior to the wrist joint and also it can perform abduction of the hand at the wrist joint let's look to the first movement which is flexion of the wrist this is the flexor carpi radialis muscle one of the muscles that perform a flexion of our wrist as you see and the second action is abduction of the hand it makes radial deviation of the hand which is called abduction of the hand as you see it will take the hand out like this it's called radial deviation or abduction of the hand okay now we will go to the third muscle which is palmaris longus muscle as you see let's zoom here this is palmaris longus it's a small flesh muscle with long slender tendon and by the way this muscle may be absent it's not present in all population so uh, uh, it may be absent in some population as regard the itch its attachment is very nice it originates from the common flexor origin as you see which is the front of the medial epicondyle of the humerus and going to be inserted into the deep fascia of the palm of the hand mainly the palmar aponeurosis and the flexor retinaculum of course this muscle will make an action uh, uh, just like any muscle crossing in front of the wrist which is flexion of the hand it will help in flexion of the hand and this is the movement we will select the palmaris longus to look to it it make flexion of the hand at the wrist joint and another action for palmaris longus is the uh, 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 help in the tensing or make the skin of the palm of the hand tense okay and now let's go to the next muscle which is the flexor carpi annaris which is the most medial muscle in the muscles of the front of the forearm flexor carpi annaris let's look to it alone like this to know its attachments and let's show it it takes origin by two heads as you see humeral head which is the front of the medial epicondyle which is called the common flexor origin and ulnar head which is the olecranon process so it has two heads humeral head which is the front of the medial epicondyle let's look to the medial epicondyle of the humerus as you see and ulnar head from the olecranon process of the ulna and its insertion as you see will be going to the okay let's busy form bone of the carpal bones and extend into the hook of hamid bone of the carpal bones and also into the fifth metacarpal bone so its action will be like any muscle crossing in front of the wrist joint which is flexion of the hand at the wrist joint so what are the muscles involved in the flexion of the hand up to now flexor carpi radialis palmaris longus and this muscle which is flexor carpi annaris up till now because all of them crosses in front of the wrist joint another action for flexor carpi annaris will be the adduction of the hand or ulnar deviation of the hand as you see it takes the hand medially takes the hand medially so it forms what's called ulnar deviation or adduction of the hand I think it's clear so we have flexor carpi radialis performing abduction of the hand and the flexor carpi annaris performing adduction of the hand 
Now we will talk about our last muscle, which is in a different plane than all these muscles. Let's uh, remember with each other that we discussed now pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and the flexor carpi ulnaris. All these are in the same anatomical plane, hiding below them or deep to them the flexor digitorum superficialis. It's called digitorum because it is the only muscle in this muscle at the, reaching the fingers, as you see. So, as regard the attachments of flexor digitorum superficialis, let's look to this view and let's show the muscle like this and let's talk about its attachment. It has humero ulnar head, as you see, humero ulnar head. The humero ulnar head is the origin from both the medial epicondyle of the humerus or the common flexor origin and the coronoid process of the ulna. And as regard, the other head is called radial head. It's called radial head, as you see. The radial head is the origin from the oblique line of the radius or the anterior oblique line of the radius. Let's fade the muscle to see the attachments exactly. So it has humero ulnar head originating from medial epicondyle of the humerus and the coronoid process of the ulna and the radial head originating from the anterior oblique line of the radius. And it will be going to be inserted into the front of the uh, middle phalanges of the hand as you see let's zoom the attachment to the fingers each tendon will split to attach to the sides of the middle phalanx of the corresponding finger and as you see it's going to be inserted into the medial four fingers but look to each tendon it will split like this to be attached to the sides of the middle phalanges of these fingers so its action will be on both wrist joint and on also metacarbophalangeal and the proximal interphalangeal joints it will perform a flexion on all these joints let's look to the flexion of the wrist and to enumerate all muscles involved in the flexion of the wrist they are flexor carpi radialis palmaris longus flexor carpi annaris and finally flexor digitorum superficialis they have the common feature of crossing anterior to the wrist joint so all of them can flex the hand on the wrist joint and as regard the flexion of the fingers as you see let's rotate the model like this it performs flexion of the metacarbophalangeal and the proximal interphalangeal joints but flexor digitorum superficialis as you see can't flex the terminal phalanges it flexes the wrist the metacarbophalangeal joints and the proximal interphalangeal joints as it doesn't reach the terminal phalanges and all its action is on the hand and the medial four fingers it has nothing to do with the thumb okay and now we reach the end of our uh, uh, video we talked about the superficial group of the muscles of the front of the forearm uh, goodbye until we meet again in the next video to talk about the deep group of the muscles of the front of the forearm